Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little here with episode 7 of Weekly Poker Hand, where I go over one of my hands, or someone else's hand, and I discuss both my play and my opponent's play. Uh, last episode we didn't get to see our opponent's hand, but we did play a very large pot with him where we had the 8-5 offsuit. So this is exactly one orbit later in a $10,000 World Poker Tour event at Bellagio. These players' names at the table, besides Kid and mine, Jay Cardshark, are incorrect. Um, but again, this is a live tournament, and the players to my left are all fairly tight. Last episode, I tried to get this kid to stay in line by 3-betting him, very wide. And and this is exactly one orbit later, and in that orbit he didn't really play any hands besides that one that he played with me. So I, he, maybe he tightened up, maybe he didn't. Right here he raises to 2.4 big blinds, and I have ace-queen. And right here, if I make it, say, 6,000, and he 4-bets me, as in, say, I make it 6,000, he makes it 15,000, I'm going to have no clue what to do at all. So right here, I think calling is a very good play. It's going to make my hand look fairly weak, and also, it may induce him to just spaz out, you know, for no reason. And if I do hit an ace or a queen, it's going to be fairly underrepresented, which is very important against a player that relies a lot on just being aggressive and pushing you off your hand, because if they don't think you can have something like top bear, top kicker, in your entire range, they're going to be much more likely to try to take you off your hand. So flop comes 7-6-2 with two spades. I have the ace of spades. My opponent bets 3,000, which is a little bit less than half pot. And right here I think folding is absolutely out of the question. Uh, we have ace high, which is probably good. And also we do have a backdoor spade draw. So there are a lot of turn cards we can continue on. And... Also, this board, even though we may think this opponent's opening super wide, is not really great for our opponents. Unless he has a pair, we're probably ahead here unless he has exactly 7-6, seven, 7-8, six, seven, 6-5, or something like that. And against those hands, we have a ton of equity anyways. So, I like to call. Right here, I don't really like raising, because if I raise and he shoves it on me, again, I have to fold. And you don't really want to force your opponent, or allow your opponent to force you off a hand that is probably good. It turns the eight of spades, which is not great for me, because now if he has 10-9, he has a straight. And if he has two spades, he has a flush, but that's pretty unlikely. Um, but I do have the ace of spades, so I'm just never folding. Um, anytime you have the nut flush draw and you're getting great odds, fairly deep stacked, you just shouldn't fold it. Uh, I do still think his range is made up of hands like queen-jack with the queen of spades, jack-10 with a spade, possibly something like... 6-5 with a spade. Um, it's a little bit interesting here because he can't have the ace of spades, so that does take a lot of bluffs out of his range. But I'm honestly not too sure he would even continue betting with the ace of spades here. He'd probably go for a check shove. So right here when he bets, I think his range is pretty polarized to either being sort of a bluffy type hand like queen-jack or king-queen with a spade, or something like 7-8, or maybe even a straight that he's just trying to protect. And anytime a guy's very polarized... Hands like ace high go way up in value. So the river's a six. He bets 10,500, which is a little bit less than half pot. And right here I have ace high on the river. And right, this is a cool spot because if he's bluffing, I probably have the best hand, but not necessarily. Here he could be bluffing with something like threes or fours. And anytime you call down with ace high and your opponent shows you pocket threes and scoops a nice pot, I'll tell you from experience, this happened to me like, 20 times. It's the worst feeling ever. <laughs> so if you ever want to win a lot of money off me, just simply value bet your pocket threes, three streets, because I will probably call down. Um, anyways, right here, if I'm going to stick with my read that his range is very polarized towards either a very strong hand, like a straight or two pair, but those two pair just got counterfeited, or something like a bluff, like, you know, king, queen, queen, jack, Maybe even something like ace-jack with a jack of spades. Um, I think we have a pretty easy call down here. The the one hand, the few hands I really am worried the most about are something like threes, fours, and fives. But again, I didn't really think that he would barrel the turn with those hands. But I guess if he has like the three of spades, he may fire out with it. So it's a gross spot, but we're getting great odds. And anytime you're getting good odds against a player that probably bets this size with pretty much his whole range, it's never that bad to find a call here. Um... And that is what I do. So I do find a call. 
he shows the jack ten with the jack with the ten of spades, and we scoop another very nice pot off the kid. And unfortunately for him, a few orbits later, he busted. And I didn't get his chips, but it was still a fun spot. So, if you want a thorough treatment on metagame issues, such as when you think someone's going to try to outplay you and how to deal with that type of thing, I definitely suggest you check out Volume 2 of my book, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker. That will be out sometime in early 2012. And also, be f- feel free to check out my poker training site, floattheturn.com. And if you guys have any questions or comments about this video, f- please post them. And also, if you would like to send in a hand for me to review, send it in to the site. This has been Jonathan Little for weeklypokerhand.com. Thanks for watching.